What's up guys, welcome back to another Content Advent Calendar video. Thank you once again for joining me. Today we're going to do something quite creative, we're going to do something quite fun. We're going to capture a specific photo that I've wanted to capture for a long, long time. We're going to try and get a photo of my two dogs playing chess. Now, a little bit of background to this. First of all, we redecorated this room earlier in the year. This is my dining room. It's kind of got this dark theme now, kind of dark blue, these lamps. I think it's quite nice. We've got a Christmas tree over there. Lovely, lovely kind of feel to it. A little bit different from the kind of super white office room that I've got that I usually film in. So first of all, this is a nice room to set up for two dogs playing chess. Second of all, I've got a nice big empty space on a big old dark wall just over there, which would be perfect for a nice canvas print of my dogs playing chess. And then third of all, I was heavily inspired, not only, of course, by the painting, I think it's a painting, of dogs playing poker, which I love, but also of this photo that I took on my phone earlier in the year. This is me coming downstairs and my dogs are just sat at my kitchen table very suspiciously as if one of them is explaining some kind of plan to the other one and I managed to get this photo. Now, I loved it. Obviously, they shouldn't be on the kitchen table. I'm not completely crazy. I know that they shouldn't be on the kitchen table. Don't you worry. I'm taking measures to stop it happening. But I loved the vibe, the look of that, and I wanted to get a similar sort of photo, but like I say, of them playing chess. So that's what we're gonna do in this exact position here. So we've got nice kind of lighting behind. We're gonna use a light to kind of light them as well to get nice kind of photos, but I'm not crazy. I know that we're not gonna be able to just set up a chessboard and have the two dogs playing chess or sitting here. It's just not gonna pan out. I'm gonna have to do this in a little bit of a clever way and use a little bit of Photoshop to kind of put everything together. So we're ultimately gonna go for three photos, or at least that's what we should have done. When I was testing this out, I ended up getting what I consider to be basically the ideal photo while I was setting up to actually test this out to make sure I could make a video out of this. And I didn't get three photos. What I should have done is get one clean plate. That means setting up the chessboard, setting up the lighting and everything, and getting a photo of just that, no dogs, nothing. Focused on the chessboard and around f5.6 for the aperture to get a nice kind of deeper depth of field. However, what I decided in the end was that I wanted a slightly shallower depth of field. So actually I was just gonna go for two photos. I wasn't gonna use that clean plate. I was gonna try and just get one photo with one of the dogs sat with the chessboard and then another photo with the other dog sat with the chessboard camera's on a tripod, locked in, so it's going to look exactly the same. We're going to have the exact same kind of setup, same settings, just focused on one dog and then focused on the other dog, and then we can put them together in Photoshop. And that way we can shoot at f2.8 and we can get a nice, slightly shallower depth of field so that everything behind is slightly out of focus, and we can get a nice kind of warm, Christmassy, chess-playing vibe. So that's exactly what I did. Now, here's the first photo that I took. I set up the chessboard. I've got my dog, Nala, sat on one side. I tried using treats. She ended up not being into it in the end because, long story short, she didn't love sitting on the chair. But there's one thing she does love, and that's tennis balls. So I popped a tennis ball by the chessboard so that she could be looking at that. She sat on the chair, she's being a good girl, and she's looking at the tennis ball, which, if we then remove in post, makes it look like she's looking at the chessboard. Next up, I take a picture of my other dog, Pepsi. Now, like I said, camera's locked in on the tripod, same setting, same everything. I'm just changing the focus point to be over him. Now, I could have made this easier for myself. I could have actually used manual focus. So I could have focused on one of the dogs and then locked in the lens on manual focus. That would make it even easier to put all of this together, but that's not what I did. I focused on one dog and then the next photo, I focused on my other dog, Pepsi. Now, he sat in the other chair. I needed to make sure that he wasn't kind of overlapping Nala too much or causing any problems with that. And for him, it was much easier. I could just use little treats to just get him to kind of look at the chessboard. But I kind of wanted one of them to be a little bit interactive with the chessboard. I had already set up the chessboard and essentially played some moves against myself to actually make it so that the, the chessboard looked like it was in in use, the game was ongoing, and there were real moves that would make sense. So theoretically, if you looked at the pieces, don't look too hard, but if you looked at the pieces, it would make kind of make sense as a, as, a, as a game of chess. So I've got my other dog here. So what I wanted to do was move a treat slightly closer to the chessboard, actually make him move in as if, you know, once the treat and my hand and everything is gone from the photo, 
as if maybe he is going to move one of the chess pieces by sort of nudging it with his nose. So that's exactly what I did. So now I've got these two photos. Now, like I said, I've had a clean plate, which is just a photo of the chessboard and the surroundings without the two dogs. It would actually make it very easy for myself because I could just use Photoshop to mask in the two dogs. But actually, it's not too bad just having the two different dog photos. I can actually still put them together. The key is, as I've mentioned a few times, the key is all about having that microphone locked in on the tripod and having the settings the same. So we've got the same exposure and it's gonna have the same overall look. Now we can take both photos into Lightroom. Initially give them or give one of them an edit, a global edit. We're gonna use things like contrast, highlights, shadows. We're gonna get the look that we wanna go for and a little bit of color grading as well. We can then apply those same settings to our second photo as well. So they are both edited in the same way. They both have the same look to them. Next up, we need to take both of these into Photoshop as layers. So we've got one on top of the other. And this is where it all kind of comes together. We're just gonna use layer masks to kind of put everything together. Now, obviously the tennis ball is in one shot. We need to remove that, but it's not in the other shot. So we can use a layer mask from one of them. And that literally just means popping that layer on top, a layer mask on there, make it all black, and then paint with a white paintbrush over the areas you want to bring out from that layer. And that means that we can get rid of the tennis ball by having the other layer actually showing on that part of the image, which means the tennis ball is no longer there because it wasn't on the other photo. Next up, we can of course use the layer mask to actually bring out Pepsi in this case, and then we can get rid of anything else we need to get rid of by using one photo's layer mask or another photo's layer mask to remove kind of elements from the photo that we don't want. It's actually very, very easy. The next part simply comes in just making sure the mask is nice and kind of tight, nice and, and good looking. And of course, because I did change those focus points, some of the image actually is slightly different. So for example, the chess pieces might be in a slightly different position or they might be slightly out of focus or something like that. So we just need to make sure we are very, very precise with those masks, but it is just as easy as using a white or a black paintbrush to remove with black, of course, and kind of reveal with white whatever we want to reveal on each individual layer to get rid of everything that needs to be gone and keep everything that needs to be there. Then we've got both dogs in the photo and we've got everything as it needs to be. We've gotten rid of the treats, we've gotten rid of the tennis ball, all good. Next up, we might want to give it an overall color grade. And this might be using something like a color lookup, which is super easy to use in Photoshop. It's a little bit like a filter, but it's going to affect colors, contrast, all kinds of stuff like that. We can reduce the opacity once we pop it on there. But by putting a color lookup over the whole thing, it kind of marries all the elements together, it kind of brings it all together as one photo. It doesn't look like you've kind of spliced things together. That's a really easy way of doing that. You might want to then bring in a curves adjustment and just darken some of the areas around the dogs, maybe another curves adjustment and brighten some of the areas with the dogs. Now you can do that by just having the curves adjustment, brightening it by bringing a midpoint up or darkening it by bringing a midpoint down, pop a layer mask on that curves adjustment, make it all black. If it's all white already, you can press Control I to make it all black. And then with a white paintbrush, just paint on the areas you want that particular curves adjustment to affect. So with the darkening ones, we just paint white around the kind of edges around the dogs to kind of darken that. And then with the brightening one, we just dab on a relatively low flow white paintbrush onto dogs onto the chessboard. Now that low flow means we're going to be building up painting this on. Super nice, super easy to be honest. Not a difficult thing to achieve, but the end result is exactly what I wanted to go for. Now I did do a little bit of trial and error with regards to actually the placement of the chessboard, of the dogs, the lamp behind, the Christmas tree. I wanted to have a little bit of Christmas tree in there, but I didn't want to make it overtly a Christmassy photo. I tried a different style where we had the lamp in a different place, but it kind of looked like it was on top of my dog's head. And it just wasn't as good. But the final photo, which is this one here, is exactly what I wanted to get from this experience. It's exactly what I want to hang on my wall. And I'm now going to get that printed off. I'm going to pop it on the wall. Perfect in time for Christmas. And it's a really nice way of having a photo of my dogs, which isn't just kind of a straight portrait or something like that. It's, a, it's an interesting photo, you know, it's going to, Hopefully turn some heads, you know? I think it's I think it's come out exactly as I wanted it to. And if you wanted to do something with your dogs like this, or, or cats, or only any pet, it's a really nice way of getting a nice photo of them. And it's probably not as difficult as you think. I would say that the biggest challenge 
is getting them to sit still on those chairs. But for me, that was all about the treats. The treats, and of course, the tennis ball as well. Now, if you'd like to see anything else in particular, maybe a more in-depth guide on how we edited this or something else to do with pets or really anything else at all, we've got videos every day all the way through to Christmas Eve, the 24th of December. So any ideas or suggestions or something specific you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's a full list of kit that I used for this photo. And of course, this whole video and everything down in the description as well. So you can go and check all that out at parkcameras.com, of course. I will see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow. And until then, as always, thanks for watching.